Today I'll discuss outpainting using Stable Diffusion Forge UI. Outpainting is a technique in digital art and image editing. It involves expanding the borders of an image by adding new elements to its edges, essentially revealing more of the scene beyond its original visibility. Open Forge and navigate to the Extension tab. Then click on Available and hit the Load From button to load all available extensions. Next, search for Mosaic to find the extension named Mosaic Outpaint tab. Click on its name to open the GitHub page where you can learn more about the extension, including how to use it, its parameters, and examples. After that, click Install and wait for the installation process to complete. As suggested, go to the Install tab, and there, click on Apply and Restart the UI to finalize the installation. Now you'll notice a new tab called Mosaic with several options, which we'll discuss shortly. Let's head over to the text to image section to give it a test. I'll use a prompt uh, describing a cute bunny in a fantasy forest in a digital painting style with a square ratio. And from the SDXL styles extension, um, I'll select the digital art style. Then I'll hit generate. And within a few seconds, I should have a lovely image of a cute bunny. In the mosaic tab, you'll find the option to input your image either by dragging and dropping it or by uploading it. You can remove it by clicking on X. However, a convenient method is to right click on the image you want to use, um, select copy, then hover over the designated area in the mosaic extension and use control plus V shortcut to paste it. In the direction section, you can choose the side of the image you want to expand by selecting one or more directions. For example, you can choose the right side and click Process Mosaic to create a mosaic that can be used later in the inpaint process. If you select left for direction, it will expand the left area with a mosaic. You can also select multiple directions at once. Regarding the method, there are two options, Stretch and Mirror. Stretch stretches the selected part of the image while mirror mirrors the image. We can also choose how much to expand in a certain direction using the horizontal and vertical expand options. If I reduce the horizontal percentage, you'll notice that the expanded area becomes smaller. The vertical expansion only takes effect when we go up or down, of course. You can easily visualize how big or small the expanded area will be based on these settings. The default value is set to 0.5. I'll choose the left direction and the tile options allow you to control the number of tiles. As you can see, you can create different mosaic options with different sizes, which will affect how the inpaint modifies the image since it looks at the mosaic to generate something. We also have a mask overlap option. You can see it better if I switch to the up direction when the mask overlap value is higher, it overlaps more with the actual image. So during inpainting, it will actually take a uh, little from the ears of the bunny. If I reduce the value, you'll see it will go just above the ears. The default value is 0.15, so I'll stick with that for now. I understand that these settings can be boring, so let's dive into an actual example of outpainting. Suppose I want to expand the left part of the image. I'll select the left direction and process that section. Perhaps I'll reduce the size to half, so it's not as lengthy. In the mosaic view, you can see a pixelated version of what could be there. Now press the Send to InPaint button. This will transfer it to the Image to Image section within the InPaint Upload tab. Please note, it's not the InPaint tab itself, but the InPaint Upload tab. Here, you'll find the image with the mosaic and the mask. Use these settings, mask mode, in paint masked, masked content, original, and in paint area set to whole picture. I get better results if I activate soft in painting, then switch to resize by, and it should be set to one. Here the denoise strength is important and should be between 0 0.9 and 1 for better results. Hit generate when you are ready. Isn't that beautiful? Ha! <laughs> Well, we need a prompt in order to work, so I'll copy the original prompt I used and paste it into image to image. Now when we generate, we should get a better image. You can still see a little line on the bottom part if you look carefully, but you can hit generate again a few times until you get it how you like it. Sometimes you can fix that line by increasing the mask blur. 
as you can see now, the blur is bigger. It's still not perfect, but you can improve it more with InPaint. A quick fix is to use Photoshop with the Remove tool, but let me show you how you can do it in Forge. Go to the InPaint tab and drag your image there. Mask the area you want to fix. Then use almost the same settings, but for the InPaint area, choose only Masked. The denoise strength is set to 0.6. Adjust the prompt so it describes what it should be in that area. Then hit Generate. I have another tutorial that goes into more detail about in painting on my channel. The result is not bad. I will change resize by to resize to a specific size, like 1024 pixels. That sometimes can help to get more details in that area. But if you are still not happy with the results and you want everything to blend better, you can use image to image. However, that will also change the bunny a little and not just the mask part of the main image. Let's expand the right part of the image as well. I will copy the image and paste it into the mosaic tab. Um, for direction, I am selecting right and I will increase the size to 0.5 to see how it will work with a bigger area. And when it's ready, you can send it to InPaint. I will adjust the prompt again and add the bunny. For settings, it should be whole painting resize by one, and denoise strength set to one. You can try a few times, probably a value of 0.9 would have worked better here. But let me show you how I improve it with image to image. Use this send to image button to transfer it here. You can leave it um, on resize by if your video card can handle it. If not, just use resize to and input a similar proportion to your image. For denoise strength, play around with the slider. Somewhere under 0.5 will keep it similar to your image. Hit generate, and here you go. A cool image that blends better. Let me try again to see if it still produces good results. Yep, seems to work fine. Looks kind of cool. When everything is done and you are happy with the results, you can make it bigger. Use the send to extras tab button. Then I just use the dot x2 upscaler with a resize value of 2. Hit generate, and it will take a while to get a bigger image. And here is the final result. Considering we started with a square image and were able to extend the background, I think it did a good job. You can also do outpainting with Photoshop. If you go to the crop tool, then where it says fill, you choose the generative expand option. Uh, you can drag and adjust with the crop tool how you want it. Um, you can even choose a ratio. So let's go with a wide one. Make your composition how you want and where you see the transparent area, that is where it will be outpainted. Apply the crop using the checkmark button. Then on the properties panel, you should see three versions and you can test to see which looks better for you. Sometimes it gets really good results, but other times not so much. It depends a lot on the image you are using. You can also select only a portion of the image and then, and then use a prompt to describe what you want to see in that area. For example, maybe I want some flowers here. This pretty much wraps up what I wanted to show you for today. I know many of you have questions about uh, stable diffusion. I'm doing my best to answer all the questions I can, both here on YouTube and also in the Facebook group Pixaroma community. I'm not good at coding. I'm a designer. And in these videos, I just show you how I use it. Maybe it will help other people. It still has a lot of technical stuff, and I'm trying to explain them the best I can with my understanding. I know some of you have had some technical problems with certain errors, but if I haven't encountered that problem and didn't find a solution, I can't help you too much on that part. As I said, I'm a designer. However, if I can and know the answer, I will just reply to you with what I think could work and what you can try. Thank you for watching and have a great day.